So you might be at the stage right now where you're editing your own videos for YouTube or for your marketing, and it's taking up a lot of time. You might also be thinking that you wanna up your quality and your computer's running slow, so you need a new one and you wanna add some professional music and images, so you need a few subscription packages too. Now, you either stump up a big wad of cash to be able to boost your own work, or you find someone else to do it for you. But do you go for a freelancer, outsource it, or maybe even find someone full time? So let's work this out for you. The first step to working out if you should pay someone else to help you is to establish how much editing is actually costing you already. So have a look at the link in the description. We've built you an editing calculator which will show you just how much money it costs you to edit yourself to a high standard over the course of a year. Here it is on screen now. Let's say you're editing two videos a week. So eight videos a month over the course of a year and each video is taking you three hours to do well, so I'm gonna set the bar to show this. Now, this bar, you want to value your time. So you can look at this in two ways. Option one, put in how much you make an hour, or option two, put in how much you want to make an hour. There's a difference, you see. If you're a growing YouTube channel or business, you need to seriously consider how much you wanna make an hour, because doing tasks that don't help you make this amount of money are stopping you from achieving your goals. Anyway, let's just say this is 50 hours Let's just say this is 50 an hour right now. The currency doesn't matter. You might have always intended to stick to free editing software, but really to up your quality, you need to go for a pro option. So select from one of the two most common editing options. Now your computer, you might already have a beast that's great for editing, so you can leave this at zero. But you tend to find when people want to take editing more seriously, upgrade it, and that means it starts to get expensive. I'm gonna leave it at a very conservative 1500. I really wouldn't recommend less than 3000 for a powerhouse that lasts a long time. Now add your subscriptions. So Shutterstock will give you images. I'm gonna say no thanks to that on this example, but I do want access to Soundstripe music tracks and Storyblocks stock video. So we need to click that to get the cost of a year. There's other things like hard drives you wanna add or Dropbox too, but we didn't want this to go on forever, so we've not added them to the calculator. So this example, the person is spending over 16,000 in their first year editing. Year two would be less because they wouldn't need a computer, so about 14,000. If they chose Final Cut, that wouldn't be a cost the second year either, but Adobe would. So click the link to work out how much that it will cost you to edit and just have a play around with the figure. Then when you know how much this is costing you, it's time to look at the options out there to see if using them will save you money. So if you hire someone to edit eight videos a month for you, like the example, if it's less than 16,000 a year, you're actually getting editing for free, technically. In some cases, here you might even get it for half the price of doing it yourself. So let's look at option one, freelancers and the pros and cons. So the pros of freelancers, a good freelancer is like nothing else. When you find one, you will not want to let them go ever. The value they give you will make them feel cheap. You'll literally fall in love with them. It gets weird, but it's a special feeling. A great freelancer will go above or beyond the call of duty, will edit on time fast to a very high quality and advise you on how to improve your content too. So that's pro number one, an incredible asset to you. The second pro is no contract. Now, you need to remember this is not just something you can bin off without any consequences. This is the person who will rely on your income. So if you can give a heads up that the work is coming to an end, then that's preferred. There is no long-term contract here, no HR, no holiday pay, no freelance editors. So freelance editors give you more freedom than a full-time member of staff. The next pro is quality. We've touched on this earlier, but you'll often find the best freelancers have been editing for years, have a ton of experience, and wanted to leave the limitations of a paid role to earn more and dictate their own lifestyle. This means you can afford an editor who would be miles outside of your budget otherwise. In other words, so yeah, they're great, but there are some cons. So firstly, it's finding a good freelance editor. All of the pros are based around the editor you work with being fantastic. Finding a freelancer who offers this is a totally different ballgame. Sure, you can use sites like Upwork where you can put out a job request and people will send you a pitch, but be ready to get 50 requests from people all around the world who didn't read your proposal and have various different skill sets. Unfortunately, this makes finding the diamond editors harder. So there are a lot of sites you can do this on, but be prepared to add more hours onto your search process and to waste a lot of time with people who might not have told the truth in your application. The second con is testing and workflow. So you've hired your editor and then there's the easing in process, getting to know each other, building a workflow, and then finding out they don't pay for a Dropbox subscription. So transferring files is gonna become a nightmare. And how will you go 
guys communicate and leave feedback on work. Now a great editor will have this down and all of the systems in place which do cost money. Not having them is a sign that things might be a little tricky at the start, especially if they seem clueless on how you guys might even be able to work together. Availability is another con. Now a great freelancer will be in demand and you won't be there any clients. So when you ask for a job to be finished by the next day and they can't because they're servicing other clients, then you have to wait. After all, you do not want to have a go at them and lose your amazing freelancer. And then there's cost. The best freelancers are expensive, and rightly so. If you can find one that delivers quality, consistency, ease of use, advice, and more for less than 60 or 70 an hour, please let us know in the comments. They'll work fast, so a video that takes you four hours might only take them two, and then they'll do it to a much higher quality than you can. So if we put that back in the calculator, we can see eight videos a month for a year it will cost you about 13,000. So you're making almost a 3,000 pound saving there, providing you find an amazing one. The next step is outsourcing to an editing company. So these are businesses set up to edit at scale where you send your footage and they edit it. So what are the pros? Well, the first pro is they're efficient. Editing companies are set up to do just that and edit. They have people editing, so it's the same as a freelancer, isn't it really? But editing companies will have people running the business so the editors can do just that, edit, not get distracted by accounts, which means they can get very efficient. You also tend to find they have software and systems in place to make submitting and working with your footage very time effective and slick on your side. So you just follow their steps rather than spend days working out your own. Now editing companies probably have a quality that editors must hit to be able to represent their brand. So when you reach out to them, you save a lot of time not having to interview stacks of people who might just end up wasting your time. Some of them won't take on editors who don't have at least three years of experience in a professional environment either. So you can rest assured you're in the right hands. You tend to find that when it comes to editing, quality and speed increase with experience because good editors can second guess potential issues or will know how to fix them without bothering a client. Guarantees. Companies can offer a money back guarantee. So let's say in your first month you're not happy with the quality, you've lost nothing. Setup should be fast and efficient too, so you probably won't even lost much time either. A good editing company will communicate a lot with you throughout your setup to ensure it's going as easy on your side as possible. And then there's cover. So editing companies will often give you a dedicated editor to work with, so you're not going back and forth between loads of people, and it's beneficial to the client and the company in getting to know each other's requirements and making them second nature. People get ill or need a holiday, and unlike a freelancer, when this happens, your editing doesn't have to stop as a company will have someone who can cover for a few days. Through using project management tools, they'll easily be able to pick up on the style and quality of your dedicated editor too. They also offer other services. Now, due to the skills of the people on the team, editing companies can offer other services like design work too, often packaged up and included so you can have your video thumbnails or banner ads taken care of for one set cost. Savings. Let's work out how much a person who edits eight videos a month for themselves would lose or save using an example of an outsourced editing package. So as we can see, they would save over 6,000 a year based on a monthly package of 795 a month. If you edit 12 videos a month, the calculator shows a saving of over 11,000. So it's half the price of doing it yourself. So what are the cons? Well, subscriptions. You might find that some editing companies only work to set subscriptions. So if you want them to take care of an odd job here or there, it might just get a little bit more expensive. It's like a factory. It costs more per unit to make one product compared to thousands as factories are built on systems that speed up bulk production and make savings over time. Two, risk. You need to be careful you don't hire a company who's just shipping all of your work out to freelancers around the world. Now, that works and we have no issue with it, but if their team are not full-time for their business, then they'll be having the exact same issues you might have when you look for a freelance, which means you might get content late. If it's imperative, your content's never late, you need to look at the option of less risk. Number three, it's too good to be true. Under promise and over deliver, something businesses tend to strive to achieve. If you land on a website and they seem to be promising the world for a price that seems too good to be true, there's a chance it is. You know, you might have gotten lucky, but be sure to do your due diligence so you don't end up with a product that over promises and under delivers. And finally, we take a look at full-time editors. The pros? Scope. I mean, you have a full-time editor. That's amazing. The editor can do so much for you and it's all included in a set monthly cost. You can also develop that editor over time. For smaller businesses and YouTube channels, they might be able to help out with some other design work or content ideas too, and a new team member is nearly always super valuable as they bring in fresh eyes to projects. Two, timelines. Want to shoot a video and have it edited on the same day? Your full-time editor will be able to handle fast turnaround times, 
because you call the shots. They have nobody else to please. You might also find they like filming too, so they can help there as well. Number three is quality. You get a good editor and your quality is going to increase a lot straight away. Four, time. As an in-house editor will work way faster than you, so you can produce way more content than you could have done before, and it won't be an issue, meaning you can really boost your quality and your quantity. So what are the downsides? Well, the first one is price. So a good editor is going to cost you quite a lot. You can get a junior editor from about 19,000 to 24,000 pounds in the UK. These will have some experience, but looking at the cost calculator, it's the only option that will technically cost you money. So really a full-time editor pays off when you have a lot of content for them to edit. So say if you were going over 12 videos a month, then you might want to consider this to HR. When you employ someone, you take on all the issues of employing someone. You also need to potentially buy all the kit and subscriptions and pay employment taxes, pensions and more. So a 24,000 spend will look more like 30 by the end of year one. You also need to stick to employment law. So if they slack, you can't just fire them. <laughs> I wish you could. Same. I, 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 do I? Maybe. There's rules and holidays and sometimes paid sickness. So it's a big step, which might be a little bit too far for your needs. So that's our rundown of how to hire an editor. Have a look at the amount of content you need producing, what your ultimate goals are, and either stick to it yourself or look further into one of these options. So if you want to play the calculator I showed you, then the link's in the description and just see how much editing costs you and how much you might be able to save. If you want to learn more about editing, treating a YouTube channel like a business or video marketing, then be sure to hit subscribe as we release three videos a week that will teach you how to do just that. Also, we'd advise watching this video here, which will teach you some sneaky little editing tips, and this playlist here, which, wish I'd written this. It does something.